Hey, everyone, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, cool. Yes, 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 yes. Sweet. Okay, let's just take a few minutes. I'm going to tune in for a bit and um, just connect to the intention that you hold for this meeting and for yourself for this program and um, quiet the mind as much as you can. Drop into the heart. Take a deep breath. And then get to scroll through your beautiful face. It's just like in a meeting. Fun. <laughs> and tune into the metaphysical heart, the heart that's not located anywhere, although you could use your physical heart as a portal, that location. But literally, it's kind of like stepping back into an ocean, dropping into an ocean, dropping beneath the surface of thoughts and emotions. We just take a bath in that which is always here. This obvious sense of I am. A sense of me. The undifferentiated me. The essence me. So you guys made it. Tier one. Congratulations. Why did you make it? It must be very important. You must have some power hidden in you, some capacity to make a difference, whether vibrationally or through how you demonstrate showing up in this world, what you're capable of creating, how you can play with the clay of creation. And he must, above all, have a profound desire to be part of this, otherwise he definitely would not be here now. And that desire speaks to a truth, anyone who has this desire to participate. Especially if they actually make it That desire is connected to a blueprint, if you will, a truth about that being as to why they are here, what their purpose is. And if you're destined for something that feels profound, that feels like it is here to make a difference, to be part of something rare, to be part of something that's cutting edge, something that can make a difference in millions of people's lives. You know, you just know that's part of who you are. And maybe not all of you actually have this sense. It may even not be conscious, or maybe that you're not actually um, meant to play a, a key role in that as sort of a lead figure or something obvious in an obvious way. 
but nevertheless, you are connected to that same vision that those that may play a more visible role are also um, expressing. And those that are here that are of a more visible nature are connected to that same vision, that same collective vision of humanity, for humanity, by humanity, which bypasses their conscious minds. It is a, a field of sorts that surrounds the planet. And you can see this as a higher consciousness, the collection, the vortex, perhaps, as Abraham Hicks would say, the collective vortex of the desires, the preferences, the secret, true desires of all beings on this planet at this time, and the balance of that. You know, so if you have, say, 95% of people desiring the same thing, and 5% of people desire something else, there will be a combination of those energies, a combination of those vibrations, a blend, just like when you uh, have 95% water and 5% some other substance. There'll be a blend of that with the majority being water. Therefore, the end result tastes like 95% water and 5% something else very simple analogy, but there's all these millions of ingredients, millions of intentions and desires and purposes and um, relevancies of why you are here at this timing and what you're capable of, etc. And what you still need to learn. And, but the biggest thing, the most powerful thing in this field is the true desire that people have. Um, at this timing on our planet. And so it's mostly a combination of those desires, this collective vortex or this collective etheric field that penetrates all of us, that perforates all of us. And so you are connected to, um, to a subset of that, which is a blueprint that produces teachers and channelers and guides and anchors and masts, if you will, that are then able to bridge this true desire into the consciousness of man, into the consciousness of this world. So on some level, you are connected to this field. You are a shepherd. Even if you, after this course, uh, unlikely, but if you were to never ever do anything with this visibly, if you would never take this out into the world in any visible, obvious sort of way, you're still connected to that blueprint. You're still connected to that archetype of those that have the desire to share it to make a difference. And so by your very nature, you are a beacon. By your very nature, you are a mast. You are a radiator. You are a channeler. You're a bridge. You're a teacher. You're a guide, um, even if only just vibrational. So know this about yourself. Just take, take 20 seconds, 30 seconds, maybe, to acknowledge that you are part of this emerging expression manifestation, your physical body and your mental body and inclinations and talents and challenges and your emotional inclinations and talents and challenges and susceptibilities and your spiritual inclinations and talents and challenges and susceptibilities. Those are all a manifestation at this timing, both of your soul and who you are and where you're at in your own journey beyond this life, beyond this planet, beyond this incarnation. But simultaneously, it is also a product, it's an effect, it's a co-created manifestation. You, as you know yourself to be this, skin and bones, thoughts, intentions, capacities, is directly a manifestation of this blend of this collective choose desire, this vortex. You are one of the answers to the prayers, quite literally. If you imagine millions of people praying every day, like genuinely, sincerely praying, for clarity, for liberation, for harmony, for peace, etc. Literally, your body, your mind, and your intentions and your capacities here, right now on Earth, are the answers to those prayers in a very rather direct way. It seems kind of indirect, but it is rather direct. So, for some of you, this is more the case than for others. Again, there's also a blend when it comes to your incarnation. There's a blend between how much you are here for your own personal journey and how much you are here for the journey of this collective to make a difference. And each of you has a different percentage of that, so to speak, in that field. Um, and so the interview process, I try to 
keep that percentage of service to making a difference uh, fairly high. I couldn't make it too high, but I could make it fairly high to where the result is um, and you guys, so the people that we have here, uh, where that vibration of being of service uh, and being capable of being of service and wanting to be of service is strong enough and it's big enough comparatively to the vibration of I'm here to learn my own lessons, which is wonderful, nothing wrong with that. But I wanted people that are available, that have an availability in there, just like a computer, like the memory space, um, the RAM memory, it has a certain availability to run certain applications. Certain blueprints or entities do not have as wide of or as large of an availability to be of service at this time. And they can still change later on in life, but usually it's actually pretty set because people don't change too much, has been my experience, um, especially if their blueprint is to be here for a particular lesson for themselves. Then that's usually what their life revolves around. And for many, many, many years or decades, they will recreate the same patterns and similar experiences so that they really drive that particular lesson or a couple of lessons home. So in such cases, there's not a lot of availability. There's not a lot of memory space left to be devoted to an active form of investigating oneself in order to improve one's service to others and to really turn oneself inside out or to devote oneself to service to others. So take a few seconds to acknowledge this about yourself. And you're allowed to smile when you do it. Feels good, no? Must be true. And take a moment also to acknowledge this in all these other faces that you see here. Just connect us if it's a group circle of vibrations of consciousness. Generate that harmonious field, that harmonic field between the entities that are present here and that will be part of the group and those still to come because there will be a few more people that will join tier one over the next few weeks that may not have conscious knowledge yet of this dialogue that we're having today, but their higher selves are very much aware of this conversation. And so include them as well in your intention. And just feel the power of that group and what we can do together what we can be together, what we can learn together. And the difference we can make with only a few people that are really committed. Just by starting, just by learning, developing, devoting yourself and just by starting. And this is a start. This is a definite start. This is a foot in the door. This is a, this is a statement to yourself, to the rest of your life, that you are ready to step it up, that you're ready to play big. And like I've said before, it only, you know, we don't need that many people that are really committed and really clear and really balanced in love and wisdom and really here in service to others to a high, high degree. It doesn't take many of these beings to make a true and global change. Sometimes I say it only takes 10 people like that for the whole world to change. So let's see if we can push some puppies out here in this next six months.
I have a good feeling about it. You guys seem very radiant. What is a shepherd? And what is a mirror? And what is a leader? And what is a civilization of greater? Uh, those are just terms, really. So look, you know, look beyond the words, but we have to label it something in order to be able to talk about it. But in essence, it's uh, those words, any words that I use are translations from a vibrational states that I shift through that I tune into. So you tune into a particular state or understanding or seeing, and then you use your brain to translate this, which is actually quite an important skill for shepherds in a lot of positions or a lot of niches. It's important to develop the capacity to become a more efficient fine-tuned translator. And this, this takes a little bit of time. It takes a lot of desire but then it takes a little bit of practice and time to really train the brain to be able to tune into a certain state, call it the gamma wave frequencies, where there is a channeling state going on to where whatever you've received gets translated very easily in human language, if you will, in human constructs and concepts and thinking. And there's different levels to that thinking. You know, there's multidimensional thinking, but then there's also very 3D thinking and language and concepts and words, things that people can understand wherever they're at, so to speak. So to be tuned into this vision is one thing, but if you cannot communicate this, then it's not going to be that effective um, other than just radiating, it, which is great. I mean, even just that is amazing. To deepen that vibration to pure out of that vibration. But for those of you who really feel this pull to step up in an empowering way and really uh, be, be somewhat public, you know, to an extent, or at least start sharing. Um, it's not going to be very efficient if we don't develop this muscle of being a channel and being able to translate these uh, subtle energetic waves that you will be able to access more and more as we continue this journey together. So... Just like that, shepherd is also just a term. It's just a term that translates the concept of someone who is a shepherd. What does a shepherd do? A shepherd, shepherd's sheep, right? So that sounds a little bit negative, perhaps, if you, you know, why would you call people sheep? But they very much act like sheep. So I don't think it's, it's too negative necessarily to, uh, to see it in this way. What, but what does a shepherd do? A shepherd, shepherd's sheep. So a shepherd needs to rise above the crowd. You know, the shepherd needs to be um, needs to be more aware, or more awake, or more mature, or higher, or more capable, or be able to do things that the uh, sheep cannot do. So the shepherd, because of their uh, difference in uh, what they have accomplished, or attained, or realized, they can, from that space, then be of service. Now you cannot be of service. Uh, you cannot be of service so much to people of your own level because uh, it's, it's, a, it's a different type of frequency. It's a shared type of vibration. And sure, you're still teaching and learning from each other, definitely. But it's more of a, it's more random. It's not as deliberate. It's not as directional. It's not as intentional. Whereas the shepherd very clearly shepherds their sheep and gives them guidance and direction. Um, and it's not about that hierarchy, but it's about noticing where you are different, where perhaps you are more awake than most people that you meet. And how can that awakeness inspire you to make a difference? And how can you do that in such a way to where the sheep don't feel like sheep, where they don't feel necessarily that difference, but you're still making a difference with them, for them? So what separates the shepherd in terms of human terms, just to sort of move away from the analogy of the sheep and the shepherd, shepherding consciousness, the difference between a person consciousness, which is what most people are in. So let's just address that first. Person consciousness is, um, say, your average Joe, the most the majority of people that you meet that are embedded, quite heavily embedded in the matrix, whether they know it or not. And so... Uh, the hallmark of the signature vibration that radiates off of a person consciousness, or one of those signature vibrations, would be um, 
sometimes innocently so, but a service to self. It's a not knowing any better, not seeing any wider, not seeing any clearer, not having a bigger overview. And um, living day-to-day -day life, sifting through experiences from a point of view of what do I prefer? Pleasure over pain, comfort over discomfort, security over insecurity. And that pretty much defines why they do what they do. You know, for example, the jobs that most people have is uh, by and large a reflection of wanting that type of security. And um, the way people relate to each other or why they do what they do, why they throw a party perhaps, or why they go certain places or why they have certain hobbies. And you'll see that to an extent, some of that is, is um, again, percentages. To an extent, some of that is inspired by who they actually are and what they're actually excited about. But there's this large filter that lies on top of that, this large bubble that you can actually see around their head. You can sense it around their body, around their aura, especially around their heads. Where literally, a lot of the times, how I see people is in their head bubble. And they're not aware that they're in their head bubble. So in that sense, it is like interacting with another species that doesn't have the same level of self-awareness um, or capacity for self-directed free will as you have. Let's say interacting with sheep. Again, I don't mean this negatively, but just to use an analogy. Sheep is in a sheep bubble. They, they operate along certain lines and it's predictable and you can guide them in this way or in that way. And if you do this, they go there. If you do that, they go there. With humans, it's no different. So we can say we want to be of service, you know, and so many people say that they want to be of service. And it's not that they don't want to be of service. Um, it's that they, they have this unconsciousness that they're simply not aware of. That takes a lot of deliberate attention. It takes a lot of a high level of desire to clear that up, to make that conscious. But until they do that, it's literally like trying to run around with a 200 pound backpack on. It's just very, very slow and heavy and it will weigh you down and it will give you a ton of reflections that don't seem to flow very well in order to make you more conscious of this backpack. Because again, everything you see outside yourself reflects your own journey, how you can improve in that way, how you can see clearer, how you can know yourself more, accept yourself more and become more of a creator. In order for you to be truly a clear vessel, we really have to clear up our own biases. It's very important, uh, especially the later stages of your consciousness. You'll find that you have to really, really dig deep to find out that, um, to find out where you're still holding on to your self-image. And then you're offered a choice. It's like, okay, do I want to preserve the self-image? Or do I want to truly be of service to others? And what does that look like? What could that look like? And you'll find out it could look like all kinds of things. And um, it, you will find it will take a certain level of courage and a certain level of detachment and, and faith to be able to surrender into those deeper levels of unbiased uh, mirror, because you will be a mirror to another and you therefore cannot control. A person controls how they show up in front of someone else. A mirror is completely out of control. If you put a mirror in front of your face, it will reflect you. The mirror has no preference. The mirror is undistorted. The mirror is unbiased. Can you, as a physical entity with your own story and people that know you, relationships, family, career, um, future hopes and dreams perhaps, um, public uh, sort of esteem or image, with all that, can you reflect another? 100% without concern for all those things. And the shepherd begins to learn about this process and begins to sort of step out into the world and try this out. The mirror is at a level where they're already familiar with this and they've already sacrificed their self image and themselves or their sense of self so many times that it's kind of become um, a skill. It's kind of become something you're good at. So something to consider, this is the start of this program. So at this point, it might still be a little intimidating or exciting. Usually it's a combination of both. But picture yourself um, 
picture yourself having been a shepherd for a while, actively shepherding, you're meeting people, maybe you develop a name for yourself because of the work that you do, you know, quite naturally people love what you do. And maybe it takes on a company form or a business form or a public page form. And you start growing and people start enjoying what you're doing and you continue to love to share with people what you know. And, um, and let's say you reach a point where that is comfortable for you, you know, and you're almost uncomfortable, which is when life will give you the challenge. I'll guarantee you that. When you get too comfortable with your public image or too comfortable with the job that you thought you were doing and everything seems to be going according to plan. You, know, you started this course, you had this intention maybe to be, say, a teacher in some field or a leader, and it's starting to happen. You know, the things that you intended, and it's, like, it's going great. I promise you there will be a moment where either all of it comes crashing down or you are get given very consciously, you're consciously aware of it, sensitive to it, you're given the opportunity, the option to choose self-image over authenticity or true service and a purification of self, emptiness of self, uh, service to others. So it's really helpful to ponder this question quite deeply to assess those risks before you go there. It's kind of like, do I, do I have the money to go to um, Las Vegas, you know? Before you plan a trip to Vegas, you may as well check in. Do I have this money to play with? Do I have this money to spend? Similarly, if you're going to you know, be a shepherd, you might as well uh, know what you're worth, what you're capable of uh, in terms of sacrificing any kind of attachment to self-image. Your preferred way of people seeing you or experiencing you versus uh, the opposite of that. Could you be the opposite of what you mentally prefer to be in the eyes of many other people? if that indeed ends up being of highest service. And if not, then you know you're not about being of service. You're about your self-image. You're about what you think is the best, but you're not actually about being of service to the highest extent. So again, I promise you that since you signed up for this course and you're part of this vibration and you're interacting with me, that what, you know, you can still, you know, go somewhere else if you want to. Um, and maybe you'll have a different, maybe it'll be more peaceful for you. Maybe it'll be more, um, more like as you planned it. Maybe you can actually plan what it would be like to be teacher or shepherd. But I guarantee you, if you follow in my track, so to speak, in my vibrational domain, you're going to be, uh, you're going to be challenged and you're going to deal with some multidimensional puzzles that will really challenge you to the core of who you are and therefore enable you to make massive, um, spurts in your growth and truly quantum leap into becoming something more than just another self-help coach or another self-help guide or teacher or guru or self-proclaimed this or that. Um, but it is good to check in with yourself. Is that something that you're capable of? How deep runs your love for this planet? It's another way of asking that question. And it's okay to admit that it's not there or it's not there yet, but you want it to be there or it's not there yet. And maybe you don't want it to be there because it just scares you and doesn't feel like it's for you. Or maybe it feels like you're totally on board. And maybe it feels like you're totally on board, but you're totally full of shit, but you don't know it yet. You know, there's many variations of this, um, all of which will bring to the surface during this course and we'll find out what you're made of. And I think that's a beautiful thing to commit to together. And I think it's never been done before in this way. And uh, so I'm honored to be here, and I think most of you are honored to be here, and I think we're in for quite, quite the right of making the unconscious conscious. But to honor, to honor your ego, so to speak, to be gentle on the ego simultaneously, it is really good to begin in the beginning to ponder what am I capable of, and to understand that this may be a challenging journey, that this may really require me to dig really deep into who I am, what I believe, what I think is right and wrong and all that stuff. Am I willing and able to take a balanced approach to this and truly with true self-honesty in uh, do introspection and am I ready to choose between my self-image and being of service? And if those seem to contradict themselves at certain junctions of my career or life, 
can I make the choice for service to others? And can I drop the self-image? It's good to ask yourself this now. Because if not, it's going to be a bumpy right? But if you are, if you are capable of that, if you feel like the love for this planet is the fuel that sustains you, not the love that you get from other people's bubbles, which will make it much easier when you see that when people validate you, it comes from their bubbles. When you realize how convoluted and blind their bubbles are, you don't even want to be validated anymore. It's, it's, a, it's the opposite of a compliment for you to be validated and loved by people. It's a compliment for you to not be understood. It's a compliment for you to be judged and condemned. It's a compliment for you to be um, chased out of Sedona, for example. So all these, you, you don't want to be validated by someone who is of a level of consciousness that um, does not inspire you, does not have very much to offer you, is completely embedded in the matrix of unconsciousness and self-serving intentions, even if it's not their true intention, but still, they're clouded, shrouded in this cloud of self-serving intentions and bias and total partiality um, and duality. Do you really want to be loved by those people? What does it say about you if, if you completely fit in with their paradigm? That you are part of their paradigm, that you are of that level, right? So. Again, uh, just to be gentle on yourself, just to prepare yourself, realize that this is something you're going to deal with on some level, or many levels probably. Do you wanna be who others think you are or should be? Or is it the fuel that sustains you, the love you have for this planet? So in other words, can you be, can you be um, disrespected or misunderstood by everyone and still feel the fuel, still be sustained in your self-love by your love for the planet, by the love for this vision, and by the love for simply by the fact that you are one with existence. Can that become your source? Can you be, can you run on free energy instead of needing to inject yourself all the time with other people's opinions and validation and company? Because again, this is what it will take. The shepherd is kind of lonely. You will have to also go through experiences of loneliness. The higher you go in consciousness, the more lonely it gets, so to speak, the less company you will find of that level. So just like the shepherd is, there's a distinction, there's a difference there, not a hierarchy on an essential level, but there's a differentiation between the sheep and the shepherd. And even though the shepherd is surrounded by sheep and there's a lovely communication that can happen there and a lovely sense of companionship and we're all going somewhere together and let's go left, let's go right, let's go left. At the same time, if the shepherd never meets another human being or another shepherd, there is an experience there of an aloneness, a certain level of aloneness and that can translate itself into loneliness when it uses lectally um, and it uses the sort of normal paradigm of what connection ought to look like and what being loved should look like. But can you stand alone without loneliness? Or can you stand alone and even if there is loneliness, can you love that to death to the point where you run on free energy? You no longer need um, sheep or other shepherds to validate you in order to sustain yourself vibrationally, in order to feel loved, in order to feel um, connected to God. This is something that we're going to work on quite a bit as well, is um, it's to, it's to, to take, because we're all taking energy from somewhere, so to speak. We all have our source of sustenance. So we're going to transmute where we take that from. We're going to, through the process of alchemy, we're going to change that from other people to being really self-sourced within and building that connection with God directly. That's why this course will be about 20% self-realization because it's important to learn how to fuel up properly. Uh, it's important to have somewhere to go home to. It's important to have somewhere to reconnect to when there's nothing in the outside world that reflects this level of connection that you require in order to be understood, to be met, et cetera. So we're gonna, um, create 
uh, ways and, and uh, meditations and understandings and develop this sort of muscle, this connection, broaden this portal that you have within yourself to source directly so that you can stand in the face of the greatest odds and maintain absolute brightness, radiance, and confidence just because you have that connection wide open and you're running on free energy. So, you know, you can take your free energy uh, device to a gas station, but it won't flinch. It will not suddenly be more interested. Well, look, there's gas. doesn't matter. It's already a free energy device. Wherever you take it, you can take it into the Sahara Desert. You can take it into Africa, or you can take it to a gas station, or you can take it to a power plant. But the free energy device doesn't flinch. It doesn't change what it is. Similarly, can you take yourself to a situation where you have amazingly loving friends that understand you, or at least give you the benefit of the doubt when they don't, um, to the opposite end of the spectrum where you're scorned and ridiculed, and can you maintain the same level of connection to God to source? It's very important um, for the shepherd. And when that is so bright and so powerful and so strong, that's really when the shepherd starts to become the mirror. The mirror doesn't need anything, literally doesn't need anything. From the mirroring state, you don't need anything from anyone at all. At all, not one tiny little bit. So ponder that as well. Compare that to your current state. Where do you still have needs, subtle unconscious needs perhaps or desire? Or where do you still believe, where do you have a belief that you need something, be it company, be it relationship, be it sex, be it commitment, be it gratitude, be it appreciation, be it friendship, be it laughter. In the mirroring state, I'll guarantee you that you won't need laughter. You won't need love. You won't need affection. You won't need sex. You won't need partnership. You won't need commitment. You won't need gratitude. You won't need appreciation. You won't need validation. You won't need to be seen at all. Compare that to your current state just for a moment. It's a positive thing to see how you're not there yet. You want to look for how you're not there yet. And you want to embrace that. You want to know yourself. Accept yourself so that you can then become the mirror, become the creator. Same thing, by the way. So feel that difference. And there is a difference. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. You'd be teaching me or be hanging out here. So you're part of this program because there is more to grow, more to learn, more to expand, more to clarify, more to purify. So there is a difference. What is that difference? Can you, can you develop a sense of that difference? If you can, that's a very, very, very invaluable tool. It's going to help you accelerate this greatly. And you can then apply it to other people. You'll be looking at a person and you'll sense the mirror state, their highest, even beyond their higher mind, even beyond their blueprint for this life. Just their God state, you can sense that. And you can sense their higher self moving into the blueprint for this life. And then you can see their bubble and their personal consciousness and what they are aware of. And you can see how what they are aware of, where that ends, where that stops. You can literally, almost literally see their ceiling of consciousness. And you can see what they're not seeing. And you can see who they are that they're not aware of. And you can see who, how what they are or what they think they are, what they are aware of, what they've created themselves to think they are, how that contradicts or aligns to what extent it contradicts or aligns or mimics who they truly are on a blueprint level, on a higher self level, and finally on a God level. And um, this is how you begin to effortlessly sense other people and yourself. When you can sense it in others or yourself, it's really, really helpful to apply it to yourself. Where, how does it feel when I think of the mirroring state, when I tune into that? How am I not there yet? And make that an absolutely positive experience for yourself. Want to see how you're not there yet. Want that. You need to be eager for growth, eager for self-awareness. Not out of a self-mesochistic sense of wanting to punish yourself or not being good enough. It's an excitement. It's an excitement. Wanting to be of service, wanting to be the best you can be, wanting to be most in alignment with what's true, wanting to know the truth and not settling for delusion. Then we have to be honest and see where we are not there yet. If you can see that, that's half the work. 
not, if not more. See where you're not there yet. If you don't allow yourself to see how you're not there yet, you're going to be staying in your bubble. You're going to be replacing certain thoughts within this bubble with thoughts that I will give you. So it's kind of like, okay, you're, you're transforming certain concepts, certain labels, certain words, and you're changing your lexicon to one that is now shepherding consciousness. And then if you were able to maintain it, this, so stubbornly, this bubble that you currently have all throughout this course, then you'd end up feeling like a shepherd, but not being one at all. So first step in any change is know that you don't want to change. Even when you say you do assume that you are lying to yourself. Just assume it. It's the safest thing to do. You're almost always correct. And when you're not, it's a nice bonus. But just assume that from the bubble, from the Im being embedded in the matrix, you're always lying to yourself to some extent. Doesn't mean your underlying intentions aren't pure, but it means they're distorted and that you don't want to admit to yourself and you don't want to see how they're distorted. And so you're literally preventing growth and acceleration and what you're capable of, which is fucking amazing. So don't just be another self-help guide or a self-proclaimed teacher of this or that lexicon. Become something else. Become something rare, something unique. Become a portal. Become a genuine, authentic message from something beyond this level that humans know of. And it takes devotion and commitment and true desire and earnestness. And if you have all that, um, that combined with clear instruction is really all you need. The true desire is all you need. But then what's really helpful is the clear instruction, the clear reflections, the capacity, the environment to be able to talk about this, to reflect on this, to be given this type of reflection so that you're guided in a way that's taking you out of the matrix perhaps more efficiently or more quickly. But what you need is desire. So first, I want you to recognize how you're not there yet. Sense the discrepancies, sense the vibrational light, the vibrational misalignment with your blueprint. Beyond that, your higher self, the fullness of who you are beyond all your lives. The blueprint in between this life and the higher self, or you call it the higher mind level, is the blueprint for this incarnation. So you may or may not be aligned to that. You may or may not be aligned to your calling or your theme in life. Higher self is more of a, it's a less active component. It's, it's more passive. It's more just the fullness, the radiance of everything that you are, the collective of all these lives. Just like when you're adding water to the ocean, it doesn't really add that much more water to the ocean. The ocean's kind of already established. Doesn't mean you're not making any difference. But comparatively, that's the more eternal self. So it kind of shines. Whereas the blueprint is tailored to who you are to be in this life. And what are the lessons you want to learn? And what's the most efficient ways to learn this? So how are you not lining up yet to your blueprint and your calling? How are you not yet clear or transparent towards the brightness, the sun of your higher self? And beyond that, how are you not yet as clean and clear and transparent and empty of itself as God? And just feel into that, that bridge, that space in between sort of the absolute all the way through the higher self and the blueprint all the way to the physical bubble that you have. Become aware of your bubble. Don't just take your bubble with you into this course and then add new concepts or change a few concepts or throw a few out. That's not growth. That's just negotiation. That's just rearranging the furniture in your apartment. That's not impressive at all. That's not what you came here for. It's not what you're capable of. That does not do your justice, do you justice at all. So it's a, it's a form of, uh, it's a form of not loving yourself. Being too kind to yourself is a form of not loving yourself. Pretending to be kind to yourself. True self-kindness, true self-love 
comes with an excitement to see every part of you where you're out of alignment. With an excitement, with an anticipation, with a love, with a, I want to see this because I know that when I see it, I can accept it and I can become the creator. Now, who doesn't want to become the creator? Not just the creator of their lives, the creator, the creator. Who doesn't want to become the creator in heart and spirit and vibration? Who doesn't want to match up with that vibration? So this will be actually part of your homework after this uh, session. It's so write down all the ways in which you're not yet who you know you can be or are in truth. And if it takes you a book to write this down, be my guest, write down this book. If it takes you one sentence, write down one sentence. Just free flow, free flow. Tune into the highest version of you and or beyond the God self, the mirror state. And Just while you're attuned to that, you can start to see the difference between your current self and that. The longer you stay attuned to this higher vision, this higher sense, this intuitive sense of the God state, for example, or even just your blueprint level, you suddenly become aware of discrepancies. You suddenly become aware of what's out of alignment with that. And then approach that with a loving attitude enough to where you can accept it and write it down in an exciting free flow. And make it fun. Here are all the ways in which I'm not there yet. And make it interesting, make it interesting. Because the more you do this, the more you will grow, the more you will realize, the more you will expand. The less you do this, the less you'll grow and the less you'll expand, the less you'll learn throughout this course. Acceptance and knowledge of self are the first two steps. Knowledge of self and acceptance of self. So if you're afraid to write down how you're not there yet, then you're not even there yet to where you can start this course. So do that first. But I'm assuming most of you are excited and willing for this because she said fuck yes on the application form. So unless you were lying and it came from your bubble entirely, which is possible, you are willing and excited to be here and to become the best version of yourself. And this is not the same. When I say become the best version or the highest version of yourself, it's not quite the same as... Um, Someone suggesting you go stand in a mirror and, and say you're the best in the world. Um, and it kind of like beat yourself up about it and try to cover up all this stuff with positive affirmations. Because that's kind of just painful. It's just like hasty. It's like glossing over what's here, which is so valuable. All your flaws are so incredibly, beautifully valuable. Your darkness is so bright. It shines needs to be seen, addressed, acknowledged, accepted, embraced. And from that, you can jump to unimaginable heights and become the truest version of yourself. Instead of best, you can say truest too. But it's also the best. In many ways, it's the best, it's the truest, it's the most aligned. So write down all those differences after the session. Um, yeah, I would like you, if you can repeat the homework for, for us to, to write it down clearly, I mm -hmm. think I understood, but it would be nice to um, have it in uh, your wording. <laughs> sure. Well, it's very simple and you can, you can do this in your own way. You just tune in, meditate, tune into the highest version of yourself, whatever that might be. And just stay tuned into that higher version in your consciousness, vibrationally, intuitively, in your imagination. Keep that highest version in your mind, in your heart, in your consciousness. Start to see it, feel it, smell it, be it. What does it feel like? And then in that process, you will naturally see how you're currently not there yet. How you're currently still assuming holding on to certain identities or attachments or certain slow processes that you think will take a long time. Um, it can be any kinds of things that are revealed in this process. But you basically hold a brighter torch next to the smaller torch and you will see uh, where it's not matching up kind of thing. 
So, and then you just write that down, just free flow. It doesn't have to have any structure. It can be a poem, it can be a whole story, it can be bullet points, do this in your own way. Just basically just write down what you see. For example, I believe I'm never gonna make this. Well, that's your highest version of you believe that. No, just radiate. When you radiate, when you start to imagine that radiance, you start to see how you believe that you are not capable of being that radiance. Write it down, know yourself so that you can start to accept yourself and then you can start to become that highest version. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. So it's really just your, your own process, do it in your own way. Yes, cool, thank you. Yeah. Hi, so um, from what I'm understanding from the homework, this is basically a permission slip to be as critical as we would like to be with ourselves, that we're almost afraid to be that critical? Is that sort of it? To, to be like brutally honest? Absolutely, yeah, to be brutally honest and um, yeah, critical, discerning, just absolutely okay. honest. So, um, and if you can, if you can be absolutely honest, it means that you're, uh, that you're already less identified with it. As long as you're still not wanting to see it, you're still identified with it. If you notice that you don't want to see it, and then you're willing to be quote unquote critical or discerning, you're already creating space between your true self and your assumed self. And now it becomes fun because you are looking forward to seeing all the ways in which you're lying to yourself and not stepping up to what you truly are. And then you start to let go of these and you realize you're already this brightness. You just need to let go of these. Okay, that sounds like a really good permission slip because I know a lot of the times um, we're told not to be mean with ourselves or sort of not to face these things because then they attract more of them or you know it's a downward spiral you feel bad about yourself but i'm feeling really excited about this exercise kind of like mm -hmm. i don't know it feels really good <laughs> that's great yeah fantastic all right yeah it's not very kind to yourself if you're only allowed to be kind to yourself you know yeah hmm. what if you want to be unkind to yourself what if you want to be critical are you not allowed to be critical? Also with a critical, honest, discerning eye. That's too as part of self kind self love. Um, when you're talking about sensing the energy of this alignment, and I closed my mm -hmm. eyes and I could sense the difference between the higher state and where I am right now. So I could literally like sense the energy. And then sometimes on some meditations, I just close my eyes and I ask for this energy or this like shadow energy, like to leave like somehow. And sometimes like mm -hmm. I feel the energy just leaving on like a nonverbal practice, like a nonverbal method to um, meet meet whatever I am not yet and it's but at the same time I don't I'm not like writing but I'm just kind of uh, sensing and asking it to leave like can this also be done in such a way uh, or in a combination of these and writing or like are you familiar with this kind of methods too would you mind repeating your question um, talking about like when I was sensing my non-alignment with my higher self. And then I could, I could sense the, I'm calling like, like a darker energy or like this non-alignment energy. And then sometimes I just ask this energy to leave like with my eyes closed and sometimes it, it leaves, sometimes it doesn't. So I'm just asking you if it's, it's like a valid method of um, being honest to myself and at the same time meeting my non-alignment at the same time. Not sure if it's very clear. Yeah, what's really important is that you accept it, whatever its condition is, whether, whether it comes from you or it doesn't come from you. So even when you feel it's a dark energy, um, sometimes it feels like it comes from you, like you're holding on to a darkness. And sometimes it feels like it's just a sort of a dark cloud that's visiting you, kind of passing through or trying to create a ruckus. Um, First of all, you need to know it and accept it. So you've already known it, you've already become aware of it. Now you just need to accept it. So 
just be careful with the whole like um, sending it away part. Uh, don't be careful with it. You can always do that. If it's necessary, it will return. It will show you what you still need to see. But also check in, in addition to the sending it away, also check in if this is something that you're creating that you're holding on to. Um, because sometimes we wish away the darkness, but we're still believing in it. So is that darkness generated by a belief that you have, or is it just a visitation, if you will? Feels like it's more my my beliefs, or like or my conditioning, or something that I'm still believing on. And then sometimes yeah. I have to find verbal ways to unravel it, or or mm -hmm. identify it like precisely. And it's very hard sometimes to pin it down what's the what the belief is. And then sometimes I deal with yeah. it as being an energy. So this is where concentration comes in, or the the ability to stay tuned in to a particular intention. So if you're able to stay tuned in, you, you go to this brightness. Because of the brightness, you sense the darkness, right? And now you are able to, with, with sort of this brightness in your background as your conviction, you're able to stay tuned in to this darkness with sort of an objective eye, like observing it. What is this made of? What does this believe? What does it consist of? Like a scientist uh, plucking it apart like an investigator. You're not attached to any of the outcome. You're just observing. You're just becoming aware of it and you're bringing your awareness into this darkness, into these beliefs with the curiosity of a child, the curiosity of an investigator, the curiosity of someone who's so focused on it, so concentrated on it because there's nothing else that fascinates it more. Try to bring that fascination and therefore with fascination comes natural concentration or being able to stay tuned into that. And when you're able to stay tuned in to your darkness consciously, what happens is it starts to untangle, starts to unwrap itself. The individual components that created this cloud are now being seen each for what they are. You can start to see the belief systems very clearly, or sometimes it's just one thing. Uh, sometimes it's multiple, but you, by bringing awareness, staying, with the darkness, but with an optimism in your back, in it, where you're coming from. You're coming from brightness, and you're looking at your own darkness from brightness, from optimism, from faith in yourself, from being convinced that you're the light, you're not the darkness. When you're convinced that you're not the darkness, suddenly you can look at it, and it can be all around you and even affect your body. But as long as you have that faith in the background and that connectedness to who you really are, that conviction, it doesn't matter what's happening, even to the bodies. You can stay with them. You can breathe through the discover and you can stay with it and accept it. And the more you tune into that darkness, the more it starts to disappear and reveal what it's truly made of, which ultimately ends up being light. Ultimately, it's a process of alchemy. You look at your darkness and it turns into light, it turns into love. You look at your hatred and it becomes love. If you look intently enough, if you look dispassionately enough, purely enough, earnestly enough, whatever you're looking at will transform into what you really are, which is mm -hmm. awareness, love, light. And yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, but, and how to not be attached to the outcome that sometimes is tricky to like, I want to- By knowing that, by knowing that you're not at stake, by knowing that you're not the darkness and you're not what comes of it. You're not the body, you're not the mind, you're not the personal story. You are the truth that, for lack of a better word, overshadows all that. The truth that outshines all that. When you know this, when you are convinced of this, even if you're dealing with darkness, um, you're not attached to the outcome, or much, much less so. And so there's this space. You don't have to like wish it away immediately, or like, ah, go away. You can actually invite it and be just as free from it as if it wasn't there while it's here. Be just as free. Another question you could ask yourself, what would I need to be like or how would I need to think or what do I need to believe in order to feel as free with my darkness being present as I feel free with my darkness being not present? That level of absolute freedom, dispassionate, 
awareness, what would it take for me to be in that state? If you can tap into more of that state, then all your darkness is suddenly welcome and you become really efficient at letting it fall apart and resolve itself. Can you repeat the question again, please? Uh, what, sure. what, what would I need to believe? What would I need to, yeah, that's a good one. What would I need to believe? Or how would I need to see? Or what would I need to know? Anything along those lines. Or how would I need to feel, maybe even? What attitude would I need to have? What understanding, et cetera. Before I can feel as free in the face of my darkness as I would feel free in the absence thereof. As free, not less free or almost as free. As free, just as free. What would it take for me to feel just exactly as free as I do without any problems on my mind, without feeling affected at all? How can I feel and experience myself in the freest state while my darkness is present? What would that take? What would I need to understand? What would I need to transcend? What would I need to see? What would I need to identify with or disidentify from in order to be as free as I would be without this darkness when it does show up? Then you can truly start to embrace things as they are because you're no longer associating identity or what you are with what appears. Mm -hmm. So now anything can appear because you're not giving your sense of identity to it. You're not projecting that it contains who you are. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, it does. Sweet. It's kind of like the painter, the painter remembering, reminding itself that it's the painter and not the painting. But if the painter gets so absorbed in the painting, it starts to get attached to the painting. You see? Right. If it, doesn't right. Ever, if it doesn't ever take a pee break, it would just, over time, it would just become the painting. It wouldn't yeah. know any better. It'd totally forget that it has arms and legs and it can actually leave yeah, yeah. the scenario or change it or paint all over it again. As long as the painter reminds itself that it is the painter, it can make beautiful works of art without ever getting attached to any of them because it knows that it's the source of that painting. And the painter, the painting never affects the painter. Have you ever seen a painting that starts to randomly attack the painter and kill it? <laughs> I don't know of any cases where that's been the case. <laughs> So similarly, your darkness, the darkness that you observe could never affect the observer. What you've created in your life can never affect the creator that you are. So it's a matter of misplaced identity. It's having associated the observer with the observer, having associated for so long the creator with the created. So now when something that's created doesn't feel comfortable, we identify ourselves as being at stake, uh, being harmed or being potentially affected by what happens. But if you look at it clearly right now, already you're not affected by whatever happens. This whole conversation has never affected you. Mm -hmm. It's only changed the conversation, not you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's only changed the body that's having these words and these ears. Right. It's, not, right. it's not changed the one that's knowing it. Right. So it's also a process of knowing the knower. The more you know the knower instead of the known, the more you familiarize yourself with knowing the knower, the easier it is to let the known just sort of pass through, come and go. And then you can really bring an attentive awareness and investigative curiosity to your darkness and your life beliefs without it getting, uh, without you feeling affected or less free. No, you're excited about it. Like, let's disentangle this so that we don't have to repeat these same old patterns. Let me learn the lessons on a relative level that I'm meant to learn, mm -hmm. even though I know on an absolute level I'm already beyond the lesson. But mm -hmm. let me deal with these relative lessons as well, just because I can and just because it will change the nature of my landscape of my painting. Mm -hmm. I don't like the same brown, dark, poopy color in my painting all the time. I paint this beautiful painting, and then there's this diagonal line of poop going across my painting. I'm tired of it. I, I don't care. I'm free from it. I can walk away from it. Why does it happen? Even if I go to another painting and I start all over again, this beautiful nature scene, 
why at the very end of it, when I'm just a beautiful painting, is there this poopy fucking color going through my painting? So you start wondering, why do I keep creating this pattern? Right. And you bring, you bring this free awareness into this investigation, into this tapestry, this uh, field of, of your consciousness. And you start to investigate with the loving, the dispassionate, but loving attention. And just by holding that attention there, that attention, that attention, that awareness, it starts to become love light. With practice. So, so ultimately it makes sense. Um, ultimately, ultimately, you realize your participation, your unconscious participation on why the diagonal poop, you know, like you were saying, cross the canvas by, by exactly. identifying yourself more and more with the source. And I, I, it's a very strong tendency. I realize that too, which brings me to where I am right now. So by identifying with who the I am more, like you come to see more clearly the unconscious patterns that in this case are crossing the canvas. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So I'm excited for the homework. Um, I don't know if it's, I, I'm feeling a lack. When I think about that higher state, I'm feeling a lack of imagination about what that would be. I'm not judging that lack, but I'm sensing in the course and in general, this potential for extreme exponential growth. But when I think about for myself, for my essence, but when I think about that higher state, from this place that I'm at, it's like, it's hard for me to think very far um, because from the small state, it's, it's sort of like, wow, I'm beyond where I thought I could ever be anyway. Um, so I guess my question is kind of like, you know, do I have to take, do we just amp it up, amp it up, take little steps or are there ways to do, you know, leaps, take just massive leaps. Oh, absolutely. Into, yeah. You know, uh, so yeah, you can mute yourself. Thank you. You know this example that sometimes they do in like sci-fi movies where they try to explain like a wormhole. So you have this piece of paper and they draw a line on the paper and they say, well, what's the quickest way from A to B? And then they fold the paper and they push a pin through it. And it's like, exact, right? So it's like that when you, often when you think, almost always when you think, wow, this is a really long journey and like, this is like far out there for me, then you're completely projecting it from a 3D point of view, like into space time. You're using your sense of location to sell yourself short on what you're capable of by, for, by creating this image of how big and powerful it is. And then the only way the mind can rationalize that is by putting it outside of itself. That is a story and none of it exists. The truth of it is that everything I'm translating here is within you right now, right now. You're just not seeing it. That's all. It's not about attaining so much as it is about realizing. Realization is attainment. You don't attain through doing when it comes to knowing yourself. You attain through realization and th there's definite shortcuts to this. Absolutely. We can create wormholes. Even if it seems like a long journey from one dimensional plane of seeing it, you can completely make that interdimensional. You have that free will. You are the creator and you have all levels of potentiation already active. So it's just a matter of activating the level that you desire to know and, and stop conceptualizing it too much. Just sort of have a general concept of it. And when I share a general concept, let's say that I say the God state, be careful that you don't start thinking about the God state, start tuning into the God state. That's the difference. When I talk about the absolute, don't go think about the absolute because then you have a picture of like a, an infinite void or blackness that's out there. Like it can be peaceful in its own right. It's a peaceful imaginative vibration to tune into. But it's not as immediate as, as staying really open and having faith that somehow that which I describe as the in, infinite indescribable absolute, somehow that's already what you are and all this is just pure and basic. 
So keep it really close. Keep it always behind yourself, already attained, rather than in front of yourself or out there. Anything you seek is already included in what you are, always and already. So a lot of it is just your story. Sure, there is a journey. And sure, there's a learning and a process. And that can go faster sometimes and slower sometimes. And sometimes it's practically instant. But the realization is practically instant. Now, it can happen after a long time of doing a certain excuse, which is another word for practicing, it's excusing yourself. You know, excuses, practices are excuses for not realizing that. It's like, I'll go and do this practice so that I don't have to realize it now. I still recommend you practice because it's better than not practicing. And it will minimize the other excuses till you reach the point where you know you can realize and then you realize then you realize you didn't need to practice. It was just an excuse to postpone it. Um, so what was I saying? Yeah, well, you get the point, right? It's already here. It's all story. It's all story. Realization is always instant when it happens. So just open up, really just open up. Know that you have it within you and stay with that knowing. And don't think it, don't overthink it. Stay with that knowing and it will be revealed because whatever you have faith in will reveal itself to you will begin to unfold itself. It's literally like you're planting a seed and you're starting to put, put water on one particular seed, this one being your infinite state. Like just tuning into the faith of that infinite state is like watering it and it starts instantly blossoming and growing. That's the capacity that you have. You can never attain anything outside yourself. It's not possible because there's nothing outside yourself. You can never attain anything through working for something else. It's not possible. There's nothing else. And there's no work. You are. And everything I described is a different level of your awareness of what you already are being revealed to you. So ditch those stories. They're not true to you. Thank you. Hi, Mentino. Thank you so hey. much. Almost yeah, thank you. I'm completely overwhelmed here all the time. I'm just, oh my God, it's singing in my heart and in my ears and everywhere. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, you. you were talking about um, this, that you, the capacity to see the, the, in another human being, the, the bubble and the blueprint and all this, you know, you're the first one ever talking about this. I mean, I've been seeing this and I'm, since forever. And, and also my work has been through it because I can do it in another way and, and just searching like more and more and more into the, 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 the being thinking it's, there's like unlimited potential. And then also that there are these, it's like a, it's like a, 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 a million of a second where you can find just where they are and, and like that. And, and you're the first one. My God, you're the first person ever to ever to <laughs> I speak don't. about it, and I'm like, what is first, this? What first is person on? you've heard of, maybe. What's the person, person who's not the person. Uh, I'm I'm just so <laughs> excited. I I thought I have to say this like loud because it's been a mystery for me all the time, and and I really want to dig into this completely. completely. Yeah, and you're gonna you're gonna get a lot of clarity on this during these six months. Um, this is one of the crucial things that we'll be dealing with is one of the one of the foundations is to really become super clear experientially on how to interact with other people with other beings yeah and how that fits into our shepherding consciousness and and what are those subtle sort of boundaries of free will and the balance of love and wisdom and, and how to see them um, yes. so yeah there's there's a lot of subtleties to this and it's a really it's a really beautiful and fascinating science, and uh, I think we'll all learn super much just like discussing it over time. So I'm happy you're so excited about this. Yeah, it's it's something really wow. You talk about this in the first session. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> you're welcome. Thank you. If you wouldn't mind muting yourself. Oh, actually, I got it. My question is, 
when you talk about the homework, I understand that the so-called state of mind of the creator, um, I tune into that uh, with meditation or just like deep relaxation and knowledge that um, I am all. And from that um, sensation or feeling, I can write down um, why I'm still not there. What are my beliefs, mm -hmm. what are my thoughts or actions and stuff like that. Is that correct? Exactly, yes, correct. Yay, <laughs> then uh, amazing. <laughs> yeah, that sounds really fun. It's so much <laughs> fun to do this, honestly, it's really yeah. fun. It, it yeah. might be intimidating at first, but that's because we're programmed in that way. And even by spirituality, we're programmed in that way. Basically, it's like, don't see yourself and others, just be really, really kind. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, don't be real, don't be real, just all is well, <laughs> all is well, accept everything about everyone, and yeah. therefore you need to tolerate everything about yourself. So there's no, re there's no reality there, you know, there's no honesty there. So it might be a bit of a shift, but as you can tell yourself, you're already excited about this, so. Yeah, um, and it's a basic opportunity to know myself too, like all of my sides, and just to, to put them clear, you know? It doesn't have to be with judgments, like. Absolutely. Yeah, that's what we're going to learn too is, and I've emphasized this in some of my past meetings, is learn to be positively, um, what was that? You guys remember? Yes, yes be positive. Thank you. Be, there's a few people here. Um, learn to be positively <laughs> disgusted with yourself. Mm -hmm. Like where you can like see and be like, yuck, you know, like if someone poops in your hand, you go, yuck, like why don't you do that with yourself? You poop in your own hand all the time. Worse, you poop in your brain, like all the time. You poop all over your environment. You puke all over others. Yeah, all this unconscious stuff. So I think you have all the rights in the world to be disgusted with yourself. But do it in a way that's really constructive and positive because you, it's the difference between bringing, it's the difference between bringing the belief this is not possible to self-observation versus everything is possible. If you have some kind of a limiting sense of, um, I can't do certain things, or I can't be certain things, or I can't realize, or I can't resolve certain things, then of course you don't wanna see, you know, the things that would disgust you because you believe you can't change it. So you'd rather shove it underneath the rug because you don't really believe that you're empowered enough to be it, accept it, and transmute it. Hell but yeah. <laughs> When she practices a few times, you start to see your power, like actually taste it in your mouth, taste it in your being, in your heart, that there's nothing that can come your way that you cannot transmute. So your fear dissolves, and now you're positively, excitingly disgusted with yourself when it comes up. And it's like this love relationship to like, oh man, I'm, I'm pretty yucky right now. This really, <laughs> this grosses me out. I don't want to be this way anymore. It's got nothing to do with not accepting yourself. It's just not tolerating lesser vibrations that are not part of the law of one, that are not part of the original thought of love and light and unity. And when you see that in yourself, why not clear that up? You have the opportunity, you have everything you need. You have the teachings, you have the lexicon, the, the awareness, you have the willingness. So absolutely, write these things down and it's, it's at least half the work. If you write these things down and bring a positive attitude to it of an empowered, truly empowered being that is not afraid of their own bullshit, then it's 99% of the work, if not 100. It changes right there. You don't even have to change it. You just see it, you acknowledge it, you completely accept it, and you tune into your excitement for it to change, and it changes just by not pushing it away. The feeling gets You just need to be convinced really... of your power that everything is possible. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. High five. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. Sweet. Thank you for sharing. <laughs>
So you have to do your homework and uh, feel free to report on it, obviously, in the group and invite feedback from others. And if you have a question for me, uh, just uh, tag my name in it. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean up my Facebook soon to make sure that there's hardly anything else that I'm subscribed to except for this group so that it, I make sure that I see um, pretty much everything that is happening in the group. But if not, just, you know, just tag me again if I miss it for some reason or um, whatever, just tag me again or someone else will tag me. Um, it is my intention to respond to, to pretty much every query that I feel is sincere and true in the group. So that's the perk of tier one, um, is to have that level of interaction and guidance. So make use of that. Wonderful. So let's just close with, um, with a few minutes of silence. God's day at amplification through the beacons of these individuals within the painting. Just by knowing, by, by the, the painted character reverberating, knowing that it is actually the creator of the painting, it's like the painting starts to disappear. Because it's like the it's like the creator of the painting, the painter is suddenly realizing, is looking at itself, realizes that it has been creating all this, and then its creation kind of disappears from you. So it's kind of like that, but we're all doing that from within the illusion of the painting, which is kind of a cool, fun game. So take a deep breath. And feel confident in yourself and your capacity for transformation your capacity for embracing all aspects of yourself, for seeing it with an excitement and empowerment, knowing that everything is possible, that you are the creator. Therefore, you're able and willing to know yourself clearly and accept yourself lovingly and truthfully, to through that process effortlessly become the creator, open up that third eye, open up that inner sight, open up that inner capacity to know the infinite and begin through faith to channel that infinity, that capacity, that higher power into this painting, which is an illusion anyway. Take a deep breath. You can feel your power, feel your strength, feel your willingness, and also feel your absolute freedom and vulnerability in that, your absolute softness and openness at the same time that you feel that power. It's the same thing. It's not really vulnerability. It's just the entrance level. The entry level of true empowerment is vulnerability, but vulnerability very quickly disappears. It starts to transmute itself. You've never been vulnerable, you see. That's the lie. That's what you have been believing in. That's why you do feel needy sometimes. That's why you do seek, seek pleasure over pain and comfort over discomfort. That's why you can't stand in the truth when you get criticized or haven't been able to fully. It's because you believe you're vulnerable. Someone who knows they're invulnerable, they are the most vulnerable, meaning open, because they don't have anything to shove away underneath the rug. They don't have anything not to look at. Anything can come and go, and we can freely choose without pushing anything away. The vibrational reality that resonates for us, the focal point, the focus that resonates for us. Feel this power, this freedom. Take a deep breath. This is self love to feel truly capable, truly powerful, and truly ready for whatever may come. That is self love. To believe in yourself. Not to believe in your thoughts. Not to believe in your vulnerabilities. Not to believe in your needs and preferences. To believe in yourself. To believe in what you're capable of. To believe in that which transcends all, which is you. You are the creator of this painting. Vulnerability is a lie that will slowly, slowly be dismantled over the course of this program and love always comes from freedom it always comes from power it never comes from vulnerability vulnerability does not show or know true love openness yes but you can only be open when you're confident that you're free you know? 
Otherwise, it's vulnerability, which is really being closed off. It's a good initial step to embrace the feeling of vulnerability. But really, what you're getting into ultimately is this open environment that doesn't know any destruction, it doesn't know any fear, it doesn't know any annihilation, it doesn't know any threat to its existence. Therefore, it can love unconditionally. From a vulnerable state, you can never love unconditionally. You can develop empathy, perhaps, and sympathy. And it definitely is a stepping stone, but it will become much more than that. It will become much more robust and infinite and all comprehensive and pervasive, pervasive than just that. Thank you all. Very beautiful, very powerful. You guys radiate. I'm happy with the selection that we have here. And uh, this is going to be great. Great. Thank you guys. Keep in touch on the group. This is a continuation. This is not the end of a session. Uh, talk, like ask for feedback, share with each other, you know, share your deepest insights. And this, this is really about where the value comes in is the continuity that this group provides. Such an exclusive level where we're all so tuned into this work at this high level and then being able to share from that space with each other. That's really hard to Sweet. Love you guys. Bye-bye.